What's up, guys? Dylan Rush with Cage Side Press, joined today by a UFC flyweight boasting a 15 and 6 professional record, set to take on Alexandre Pantoj in a five round flyweight championship bout at UFC 296, T Mobile Arena, Las Vegas, Nevada, fighting out of Factory X in Denver, Colorado. Brandon, Raw Dog, Roy Val. How you doing, Brandon? I'm doing good. And yourself? Doing good, doing good, bro. Do we speak this into existence or what? Yeah, over and over again, bro. I'm still trying to speak it into existence. Make sure this all goes through. Oh, yeah. Manifest, baby. Uh, you're not in the prelims no more, man. How did it feel to get that call that you're fighting <laughs> championship on the main card, of course? Um, wild, bro. I remember, uh, yeah, yeah. I was on the phone. I was on the phone with someone. And then I got the call. And then I was like, I got I got to go. I already know what this is about to be about. And as soon as I got the call, I... uh. Yeah, yeah. I just had to like sit back for a minute and just like wait. But I pretty much left Vegas, got the news, sat back on it for a little bit, and then uh and then uh yeah, just didn't tell anybody. And then Dana White announced it a couple hours later and I was like, Oh shit, I gotta tell a bunch of people. Like I, I like they're gonna be pissed if they find out before uh before uh yeah, yeah, they find out on the internet before I tell them. So I was just trying to get my ducks in order, then also just, you know, trying to like let it settle in too, you know. Mm -hmm. I had two people call me like, yo, he got the title shot. Make a graphic, make a graphic. So that's funny. Uh, who's the first person you told? Um, I told the, a girl that I talked to. Yeah, yeah. So I was I was pretty much on the phone with her anyways. And uh, yeah, so I, I told her right off the bat. Um, I told my lady, I was like, uh, well, we got it. I was like, we, we did it. <laughs> and uh, actually, I, I like uh, I actually screen recorded her because I wanted to see what her reaction was. And it was so funny because she went from like, like, like I was just kind of beating around the bush for a second. I didn't. She was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was so like, funny, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I told my dog and then I told my parents. <laughs> <laughs> I also got to know. Uh, yeah, before yeah. we get into the fight, I want to ask you about something you posted recently. You, just, you wrote that you raised some money for youth boxing. Was that this past weekend in Denver? Yeah, this is past weekend. What was that like? What were, what were you doing? Just doing like, was it like a seminar type deal or what? Training? Yeah, I, I was holding it. Um, I was mainly just showing face and uh, hanging out. I've actually teamed up with this bar recently and uh, they do a lot of cool things. I did it last year and um, it was a really cool event. Um, it was really cool. And then these last, uh, these last couple, like through the seasons, we've been doing a couple of things. Um, this summer we got, I think it was like 350 backpacks of kids full of supplies and school supplies and stuff. That was one of the core things. And then the the youth boxing, I, I know the, uh, I've known this family for a while that owns the youth boxing and uh, yeah, they, 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 you know, it's mainly kids and uh, in the boxing community, at least in Denver. And, uh, you know, I guess in the boxing community in general, it's usually a Hispanic lower income type of uh, environment. And uh, they, they need to afford gloves, they need to afford mouthpieces, they need tournaments uh, or to get into tournaments, they need to travel for tournaments. And uh the gym a lot of the gyms out here are, are doing more community work than anything so they're not asking for much money from these kids so they're just barely staying afloat most of the time and a lot of these guys have families to feed or they're working double jobs and whatever so it's a uh, it's cool to kind of team up with some of these boxing uh these boxing places because uh like i said they do a lot more community work than uh than anybody really knows is because uh you know the boxing community as far as I've always known and been around, it's always in the poorer neighborhoods and they attract the poorer kids and all that, where the MMA, MMA is so expensive. Like, I don't know that many poor people that do MMA besides MMA fighters. So, <laughs> so it's just the MMA fighters that are struggling. And at a certain point, that's a choice too, you know? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is your dream. You choose to do that. You're a grown ass man. But some of these kids is like, this is what they do. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like, uh, especially like years of working in the juvenile correction facility and working along that, the side of stuff like that is, uh, I, I like working with the youth a lot, you know, mm -hmm. are some of those kids from the correction facility blown up your line after you got the title shot? Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. So I, I think a couple of them are saying they're going to come out here. So, uh, or come out there. So yeah. th that's pretty cool. You know, uh, it's cool too. Cause like I've been, uh, I haven't been working in the juvenile correction facility for a while. Mm -hmm. And, uh, there's a lot of tragedy and a lot of losses in, in many ways too, is just losing, losing their lives to gun violence and just, you know, and then also just going back into the system. So a lot of the kids that I still talk to are, are the few that have escaped it, you know, and the few that have uh, turned their lives around and stuff. So 
it's been really cool. And it's, it's really cool to kind of reach out and talk to some of these kids because, uh, I don't know. I've always taken inspiration from a lot of them and I know vice versa too. So it's just kind of cool to like, we can drink a little, drink a little bit of each other's tea and uh, share it together. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's cool to see like at this point in time is like anybody who's been out this long has been doing some good things or, you know, are just escaping, <laughs> escaping the death sentence too is, is a few of them. But that being said is the majority of them have that I'm talking to at this point in time now have changed their lives around and there's so many kids along the ways that have, uh, and I've talked to you about this, that have passed away, that have gone shot, that have uh, shot somebody, have been in numerous of different things. Um, fentanyl, one of, my, one of my favorite kids are the kids I used to work close with, uh, had a fentanyl overdose and, and passed away. Uh, so it's just, uh, it, it's cool to see it now. And then it's cool to be on the other side of things of just inspiring kids and uh, trying to trying to beat it before it happens because uh, what, once they're in the juvie system, life's a lot harder to kind of bring them back, you know, but when they're fresh and uh, there's a lot of hope and a lot of that is just what you want to keep instilled in them. And I think the main part is just being in the preventative side of, the side of things, you know. Definitely. It's cool to see you continuing to, you know, show out and help the community in different ways. So commend you for that. Uh, you were in Vegas recently. You saw a couple of your teammates fight, but specifically, I want to talk about Jonathan Martinez. What did you make that performance? It seemed like he executed that game plan flawlessly, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Uh, God, that kid's incredible. That kid's a hard worker too, man. Um, I feel like uh, I'm I'm always one of the harder workers in the room, and uh, it's me and John. I've been competing every every day, every fight camp and stuff. So one of my favorite things is when me and him on fight camp together, and uh, I find out what he did, and I'm like, when well, I gotta go on a run, and like it's the same thing. I can tell he's the same way. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, just leaving the gym, and he's like, all right, I'm going on a run. Like it's just <laughs> constant competition like that, and it, uh. I feel like when it comes to putting work, me and me and Jonathan put in a lot of work together. So uh, I don't know. I, it's just cool to see his hard work pay off and all the cool things he's doing, man. I don't know. I don't, he doesn't talk. John's is not much of a talker, but uh, Jonathan probably has one of the best youth programs in MMA in the world right now. He has kids that are studs that are like full on MMA fighters, including his son. And uh, he's doing such a great job down in his little, in his little small town in Texas. But yeah, he's doing so many cool things that it's like uh I find inspiration from some of my teammates in so many different ways, but Jonathan's one of those. I'm like, damn, this was so he's, he's something different, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that performance was cool. And Adrian Yanez, man, well, I'm a Yanez fan. I'm a huge mm -hmm. Yanez fan. And uh, this is the only fight in the UFC that I've never just went for him, you know? And uh, I was just, after the fight, I was like, bro, can you just not provide my teammates again? Because I like going through, <laughs> I want to see his career go well. And it's like, I'm over here helping Jonathan or, or being a part of this camp and plotting on how to beat Yanez and it's like yeah, I want that kid to succeed too you know it's like I want all these I want a lot of these dudes to eat but Yanez is a good person and Yanez is a good kid so uh it was one of those like uh it, it was it was cool it's cool to see Jonathan's work come true and uh, his dreams are, are right in front of him and he I think he's realizing how good he really is and it's super awesome to see the fruits of his labors pay off but uh, that one was a bittersweet one for sure I think it was for him too so I feel you. Yeah, he even said it. He said like he likes Giannis and stuff. And Giannis showed a lot of heart. So and we, yeah. you know, you know, as we'll get back out there. I want to ask you about one more guy before we talk about your fight. Someone that's not your teammate, probably far from it. Uh, what did you make of Muhammad Mokeo's performance this past weekend, or or his comments? He said that he doesn't view you as much of a threat. Oh, he did. He making comments about me. Yeah, he said I mean, honestly, about yeah. To be hundred percent honest, uh, I watched. I started watching the beginning of the first round, and then the second round happened, and I was like. All right, this is kind of gay, and I took a shower. <laughs> I went and took a shower, and I was, I just got ready because I just took. I went to practice, and I was like, uh, the time I practice got out, uh, um, yeah, it, it was just like right when that fight was going on, and as soon as I saw it, I was like, all right, cool. Like, uh, I feel like I seen what I needed to see, and I was over it a little bit. So uh, I only watched the first round of it, um, maybe the maybe the first round in the first minute or the first couple minutes, but yeah. So uh, I mean, good on him. Good on him. I feel like he's doing a really good job. Uh, I don't really know how that fight panned out necessarily, but he got the job done. So that's cool. That's good on him, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so last time you lost the fight was to none other than Alex Pantoja. You've won three consecutive. Son of a bitch. <laughs> 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 what do you credit this recent success to over the last few years? You haven't lost a fight since then. Uh, Alexandre Pantoja, 100%. Uh, I feel like I had to adapt and overcome almost with Alexandre Pantoja. There's so many cool things that... Uh, I mean, maybe not cool things, but there's so many different things I had to change up and 
and I had to grow. And that was one of those, like, uh, with the Moreno fight, it's like, I can make a million excuses. Or I'm like, you know, like my arm was dangling, you know what I'm saying? Like he, uh, in my opinion, like, I still think I was going to win that fight. But that being said, with Alshon de Pantoja, I lost. Like, there's no question about it. There's no questionable judgment. There's none of that. It was like I lost. And uh, I feel like I had to sit with that for the last two and a half years, three years almost, or whatever it is. And it's like I, I finally just get to get my revenge or, you know, show my growth mainly is really what it is. And it's like I credit that 100% to Alshon de Pantoja. I feel like I had to mix up so many different things. Uh, my style, my my mentality when I went in there is I was just going to break people with cardio and will. And then um, with with Alshon and Pantoja, I was making a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes that I, I didn't have to make and uh, I, I didn't have to do. And it was a lot of those things where I was like, I, I almost put like what I did good um, or like one of the things I did good, I made my primary focus compared to all the other things that I do good, which is being technical and being smart and being fast and a, a bunch of little things that I'm like, as soon as I got to the UFC, I was like, we're just going to run through the people. I'm going to stay in someone's face. I'm going to make it exciting. I'm going to get 50 Gs and, uh, and I'm going to walk right through all these guys. And uh, I found a Pantoja made me pay. And that being said is he made me grow too. You had such a cool quote. You basically just said it and explained it, but I'm not even going to try to remember it. I'm going to butcher it if I do, but it was something like, because he beats you, he's going to be the, he's his, oh, I don't know how to say it. He's the reason he's going to lose this fight. He beat you. And then because he beat you, then he's going to lose this one. Something along those lines. Right. Yeah, and I wholeheartedly believe that. I wholeheartedly believe that um, Alexandre Pantoja, I've grown so much because of that fight. And uh, even rewatching it now, it's like so like, uh, like uh, I can't believe I was making those little mistakes or those big mistakes or huge mistakes. And uh, I feel like walking to that second round, it was my fight to win. I remember walking, like as soon as that first round was over, I looked at him and we we're both walking to our corner and I was like, boom, title shot's mine. And I remember thinking that in my head. I'm like, all right, I have this secured. I was even like sitting in my corner watching him across the way, like my coach is cornering me, whatever it is. And I remember looking across the way and I'm like, I broke this man. Like, this is my fight to take. And I just rushed the finish. You know what I'm saying? I just rushed the finish. And I was like, if I could have took my time, been a little smarter. And, uh, you know, I, I have 15 minutes to work. And in this fight, I have 25 minutes to work. And it's like, I don't need to be out of there in the first five minutes. I feel like I made such a, a huge portion of my career of winning first round and just being out that I, I put a lot of importance on that and rush things that I don't necessarily need to rush. And you see these championship level fighters and they don't do any of that stuff. They, they chill, they, they use 25 minutes and they'll, they'll use it to set up something, you know? And uh, I wasn't doing that. I was just throwing my, all my eggs in the basket and just letting it happen, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what locked me to fight in my opinion. As you mentioned, this fight's 25 minutes as opposed to, I think, all of your UFC fights. The last time, I think the only time you went to full five rounds was November 2018, Casey Kenny, right? You were fighting for the LFA championship in Phoenix. How much more rigorous rigorous is, like, the training regimen, like, the conditioning when you're going for a five-round fight as opposed to a three-rounder? I feel like I'm always ready to go 25 minutes, honestly. I feel like that's one of my, like, uh, cardio is my superpower. Cardio, like, is something that I, I live and die by. And uh, I feel like when it comes to cardio, I, I can outwork and outwill a lot of people um and uh, that's something I always have taken pride in and I feel like that's actually what has led me to a lot of fucking me getting hit is I'm like I'm gonna stay in their face and gas them out you know but uh yeah yeah the the rounds this week the uh my fight camp started and normally they start off like two rounds in a row and we'll just kind of go from there it started off cranking out to a full 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 five or a full three round fight and I was like all right cool we're, we're getting underway just right off the bat and uh yeah so it's going to be different, but it's going to be cool. And uh, I can't wait to just be like hella prepared. By the time fight, the fight comes, I'm going to be so prepared. It's going to be, it's going to be great, man. I feel like uh, the last time I fought Alexandre Pantoja, I had it in my head that this is going to be a performance and I'm working to like one big performance. And I feel almost the same exact way is that I'm putting all of, all this work in for one big performance. And I think I can make this happen. You know, I'm, I'm positive I can make this happen. You told John Morgan you view this fight as a collection of your life work, right? What do you mean by that when you say that? Um, I mean, this is everything I've ever loved, man. I feel like uh I feel like in so many different ways and so many different things I've like I've messed up, you know, and I've like I've cheated and I've fucking I fucked up, right? I've taken the the whatever it is, you know, and it's like when it comes to MMA, it's like this is the only thing I've ever like fully loved right. You know what I'm saying? That like, I I gave all my love to and uh 
man, if this is the only thing that just never loved me back, I swear to God, I, I feel like that sometimes. Like I pour all my love and my whole entire heart into this. And it's like, I fucked up so many times in so many different aspects of life. And I feel like, uh, yeah, when I think about it now, and especially like a, a day like today where I fucked up extra hard today, it's like, uh, it, it's like, I never, I never fucked up when it came to MMA. I always showed up. I always worked hard. I always did the extra work. I always never took any shortcuts. I never, I never cheated the game. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's one of those things that it's like, I, I finally am getting where, where I want it. And it's like, I feel like this is just everything I've ever sacrificed and ever put, but I put so much different things in life in front of me. And it's like, this is, this is it, man. This is, this is my big moment. This is everything I've ever worked for. And uh, I can't wait to just show out, you know? Mm -hmm. You talk about the sacrifice, the dedication, everything you've done, put in, I mean, like you said, you dedicated your life to this fight game, man. Even from playing with nunchucks in the park when you're a kid, all the way to finding factory X training, fighting regional LFA, UFC, all that culminating for this one moment. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but what emotions, what thoughts come to mind when you picture Dana White wrapping that belt around your waist? <laughs> Man, I just, uh, to be honest, more than anything is just, I hope it's worth it. You know, I, I hope, I hope everything I've ever done leading up to this moment is worth it. And uh, I think, I think that all the time, I'm like, I, I hope, I hope that when, whenever, whatever I'm looking for, whatever I'm trying to reach, whatever I'm trying to find I find it that day and it's like, I don't know. I don't know if that's even gonna like, I'm putting an impossible task out there, but it's just like, uh, I hope that I don't, I don't sit there and get that belt wrapped around my waist. And I'm like, damn, maybe I should have went to call it. But uh, yeah, bro, I, I think that, uh, and like, I, maybe it's just, today was a weird day. Today was an emotional day for sure. So maybe I'm just in a weird mood, but uh, that being said is like, uh, I don't know, man. It's it's just one of those like I sacrificed so much for this and I've done so much work and so much fucking so much craziness. I missed so many moments of like a real person's life that uh if I had to go back and do it again, I, I wouldn't, you know. I like and then I even like think when some kid asked me because I get it all the time, some new kid comes into the gym and they're like, I wanna be a fighter like you, I wanna be in the UFC, yada yada yada. And I don't mean to downplay what they're saying. I'm just there to tell me like, well, what do I need to do? And I'm just yeah. like, you need to choose a different career, bro. Like, this isn't it. Like, this isn't it. This is, <laughs> this is cool. This is cool, man. And I'm happy and I'm super happy right now. And uh, I have a house, I have a beautiful house, a beautiful dog and, you know, a, a beautiful life that comes with it. But that being said is to get here it took so much and I broke my body down so much. And there's so much that, uh, that you got to sacrifice to just be an MMA fighter that uh, I wouldn't ever suggest it as a career choice for anybody. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I would just I, be like, go somewhere else, do something different, bro. I couldn't imagine the sacrifice and dedication. I'm not trying to make it about myself, but I'm here smiling ear to ear because bro, when kids ask me about journalism and doing the shit that I do, I'm like, bro, don't do it. Like I've spent so much time. I've missed so many moments. I, I spent my whole last two years at college focus on this shit and i'm always worrying just like you said like bro if, if in five years that i don't like this anymore i'm not where i want to be like i'm gonna be like fuck bro like i should have done this I, I, don't think, I don't think i'll regret it but like i understand the fears like you know you work so hard for something that when you get that moment if it doesn't feel like what you imagine bro i don't know i don't think that's how, that, how it's gonna go though i think that for you in your case you're gonna you're gonna feel like everything uh happened and uh you're gonna be happy <laughs> Like I said, it's just a weird, today was a weird day. Today was a weird day and uh, for sure. So I think that's where like my emotions are taking me at this moment in time. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if I get that belt wrapped around my waist, I know that fucking, I don't know. I know a lot of things, but I know, I know as much as I put in, it still would never be worth what that is. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Well, it's not just the belt, it's, you know, money, all the other stuff that comes with it. So who knows? There's a bunch of things that will come with it that you can't even imagine right now because you're so focused on the fight, I bet. Uh, is there anybody that you'd rather go to war with that walk into this championship battle with than Mr. Mark Montoya? Yeah, yeah. Mark Montoya and Clay. And Clay. Man, Clay, uh, those are the only two, like, set corners I have right now. I feel like I've been uh, beating around the bush and, like, kind of, like, kind of trying to play out. You know, I, this has been an emotional ride, to be, to say the least. You know what I'm saying? Like, the moment I found out, it's the, like I'm getting the ballot. The moment all, all all this stuff, you know, it's been an emotional ride to say the least. But uh, one of my main training partners, Clay, man, he even 
sent me a text message just before uh, we got on the phone of just like he wrote down the week of what we should be doing, what we should be working on, how we should, how we're going to spend our time. And it's like, I couldn't, I, I don't know what I deserve to have a guy like that in my life, bro. I really don't like, I, I, I I'm super grateful. And it's like to go to war with a guy like Mark Montoya or Clay, he's like, I, I feel like half the time, um, I just want to represent them. Well, you know what I'm saying? I just want to, I just want to do right by them. And it's like, mm -hmm. Of course, I want to win the fight and I want to win a belt and all that stuff. But I, I just want to like, damn, these guys put a lot of work in. I'll, I'll be sparring Clay and throw like a weird punch in the middle of throwing a weird punch. I'm like, I'm sorry. And he's like, for what? And I'm like, this is horrible technique, you know? Like, and it's like, you got me better than that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it, it's just funny, man. It's just funny. So, yeah, yeah, I have good people around me. Clay being one of the one of the biggest blessings I've, I've ever had and uh, definitely a training partner. I'm like, I don't even know how how I I deserve to have. You must have done life. something right in your past yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel like I feel like I've been fucking up real bad lately, and uh, <laughs> I'm glad he's still around, man. I'm glad he's still around. Mm -hmm. Another guy that's around, Dustin Jacoby, is going to be on the car with you, taking on Alonzo Menafield. How beneficial do you feel like it is to have that fight week camaraderie with you, especially during this big fight week? Yeah, it's going to be so cool, man. He Dustin Jacoby, such like a a selfless person, but he called me up and he goes. Hey, they offered me this fight this day. And he goes, uh, I, I, I want to know if you'll be comfortable with me taking it. He goes, I don't want you to do anything that feels uncomfortable for you. This is your big day, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, oh. bro, like, don't ever ask me. I'm, I have so much confidence in Dustin that it's like, I don't have to like stress about him. I know he's going to go get the job done. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I know he's going to show up. I know he's going to do good work. And uh, I, I'm so happy to be sharing a card with him and being a part of a, being a part of a card with him. And it's like, I know that guy's true skill. It's like me, me being on a card over him or like, uh, like, what is it like a co-main event compared to him being like on whatever below me. It just seems like a, it seems ridiculous to me because I just <laughs> put that guy on the pedestal. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's one of those, like, uh, uh, I'm so happy that I get to share a card in a moment with him. And then that means more of our teammates are going to be out for fight week. And uh, that, that just means, you know, that my whole entire team's coming. Like it's a big deal, you know? And uh yeah, the, the fact that I can spend it with all them is means a world, you know. Back to you actually rolling deep that week. But that's dope, bro. I didn't know that that he he would have foregone, he would have like not taken the fight if you know if you weren't comfortable with it. That shows how much he cares. That that's some brotherhood to right there. That's dope. Yeah, um, yeah. You, you hear about other teams and it's like I've never known anything but Factory X. So keep that in mind. I've never known anything but Factory X, but it's just like these guys aren't like real teams, you know, they're not like an actual team. They're just there are people that meet up and train. And I get this sport is very, very, like, you need to be selfish. You need to be selfish mm -hmm. to be there. But that being said, is like, I feel like I live for the brotherhood, you know? Like, uh, I, I don't, I, I sometimes I'm just like, I just want to be around my homies. Like, I just want to be around my friends. I don't want anything else, you know? Mm -hmm. Could you believe they were going to cut the uh, flyweight division a couple years ago? And now look, bro, you guys have, it's one of the most exciting divisions in the sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that too, man, is, uh, and I feel like that's a little bit of like, you know, Alessandro Pantoja and myself, I feel like yeah, everybody, like there's a lot of people that want Brandon Moreno to, to fight Alessandro Pantoja. And I get that because their fight was dope, you know? That being said, is I'm like, yo, this fight's going to be so chaotic and crazy and just like such a fun fight for a fan. I, not for me. I'm I'm like not looking. I've been doing the training camp, practicing for a guy that's doing an Alessandro Pantoja impersonation. And it's like, this shit's going to be hell for me. But for you guys, man, that's going to be a, fucking great ass time man and uh i feel like uh alexandre pantoja and myself are some of the funnest flyweights in the division so uh it, it'll it'll be just a show and the fact that we can co-main event a big card like this will just put more eyes and, and more light to the flyweight division and uh i'm just so happy to be a part of it and i'm so happy to be um in the flyweight division when it's exciting and to be one of the most exciting people in the flyweight division i carry all that with big honor and you've been saying that for years, man. The first time I ever met you, you said that after you beat Matt Schnell. Uh, yeah. I got three random ones for you real quick. Uh, what's the best fast food chicken spot? Fast, bro, Dave's, Dave's Chicken, Dave's Hot Chicken over on uh, – it's in, I don't know if they're anywhere else. but No, they are. Bro, I went in California. Oh, really? I just go – I smacked on that before uh, – right before I started cutting weight or before I started this diet. I'm like, all right. I'm going to be a piece of shit this week. And I went straight to Dave chicken, got two big ass chicken burgers and fries, all the above, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you heard that UFC was trying to book Nate, Nick Diaz versus GSP for a grappling fight, grappling match in December. They both got injured, so it's not happening yet. But would you like to see that? I know you're a Nick Diaz fan. Oh, I would love to see that, man. That would be the coolest thing ever. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It'd be cool to see uh, GSP compete too, man. I hear you hear how good his jiu-jitsu really is against like the elite of the elite. So it'd be cool to see him actually like in just a jiu-jitsu match against someone who, who is one of my favorite. He's the reason why I even started training jiu-jitsu is Nick Diaz and just hitting cool submissions all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any prediction for Leon versus Colby since it is on the card? Nah, I, I don't know, honestly. Because on that one, it's just like I, it's whoever can implement their game plan, and I don't know who's who's doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know either. Uh, last one real quick. Again, you mentioned that we don't want to look too far ahead, but you did comment on one of my posts that – before the Pantoja fight was even booked, you commented Pantoja in December, defend first title defense Brandon Moreno at UFC 300. Does that still sound good to you? If it played out, yeah, like that? I'm not. I'm. I'm. Once I get this belt, I'm running with it. Um, any, anybody, everybody, I'm trying to fight as much as possible, get as money as much, get as much money as possible, and you know, I, I don't want to be one of those dudes that fucking fight once a year, or every other year. I want that Volkanovski and that. Uh, Adesanya type of run where I'm I'm busting these things out and I'm I'm showing you guys I'm the best and I'm running through the division as quickly as possible. Definitely. All right, last one. It's not a question, just a message. There have been so many people that have supported you all these years through all these different <laughs> ventures you've been going through. A message to the fans and supporters that have been with you every step of the way. What do you got to tell them? Yeah, man. I feel like this is our time, and I, I know that I don't take any. I don't take anybody who believes in me lightly. I'm not any of those. I've never been a fool that half-assed shit, you know, and I've never been, uh, and I'll never be that. So I, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate it full to the fullest. And it's like, I I don't cheat that. You know what I'm saying? I, anybody that believes in me, just know I'm I'm not fucking sitting on the couch, taking days off and stuff. I'm, I'm putting in work every day and I, I'm going to get the belt for us, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, I hope this good luck interview pays off, Brandon. It's a yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, actually. Yeah, yeah, I needed that. <laughs> of course, bro. Thank you for taking the time, man. Good luck in December, man. Maybe I'll be there. I hope to be there. So be good, bro. All right, cool. All right appreciate you, bro. Thank you for your time. Sure.